so hey, uh, happy to be here. Happy to announce that we have released single sign-on for Office add-ins. They have, have gone GA, um, so it's really exciting. And I'm really happy to share a little bit about uh, what what the single sign-on feature does and how we can uh, how we can use it. Just just a little bit of overview. Uh, it is generally available, and it's available in the uh, July fork. So that's going to be rolling out over the next few weeks, I believe, uh, to the current channel, and and you know keep an eye on that. But I, I believe it's version two thousand eight. The identity API uh, requirements set does list the build, uh, and, and if if it doesn't, we'll make sure we update that specific build. But I know it's version two thousand eight. Um, you know, so single sign on. <laughs> I love the chat, by the way. This is great. Uh, the single sign-on lets you, uh, you know, reduce the number of times the user has to log in to to your service if they're already logged into Office and you're using Azure Active Directory, and it really provides a smoother user experience. And you can also, you know, really easily get profile information, or you can get Microsoft Graph data depending on what your service needs to do. Uh, really nice thing too is that it supports both work and school accounts as well as uh, Microsoft accounts. So it's not just for organizations, it's not just for consumers. You can use it no matter who you're targeting. And I just want to talk a little bit about how how the flow works. And you may have seen this before, and, and we'll just kind of go through it real quickly. But uh, you have an add-in on the client side, and that go, goes ahead and creates a request to uh, get access tokens. So this is the call that's saying, hey, I, I want to know who this user is. That goes ahead and calls out to Azure AD. So the Office host is calling out to Azure AD to get a token for the add-in server. So this is your server. And what happens is it returns. We go ahead you know, and move move forward that to, to back to the client side. That's the step three. We get, get back a token to your add-in server, to, to the Office host. That comes back to the client. So then you can go ahead and use that. Now you have the user's identity. Uh, they've consented already at this point, or an admin's consented, so that that's taken care of. And uh, the client side can pass it back to the server for validation. Uh, you know, you can use that information to store information on your server side, or you can continue on and do steps six through eight here, which show how to get to graph data. So you can exchange that token using the on behalf of Flow uh, to get a graph token and make calls to the graph. So you can go ahead and it just bit, you know you literally just make another call on your server side. Uh, steps six, seven, and eight just show, yeah, you know, you can go ahead, exchange that token, and then you get access to the graph, and you can make graph calls. So that's the flow. It's it's very uh, straightforward, as we can see here with the lines. It's actually pretty straightforward to implement. I'll show you a little demo here. Uh, I have two demos for you. So first, let's take a look at a very simple uh, single sign-on demo here. So I have. Uh, just use the Yo Office uh, uh, tooling to create a very uh, uh, Excel uh, test pane add-in, and I added a few lines of code. Specifically, I added this Get Access token. There's a couple options I passed here. I'll allow sign in and allow consent. And so, allow consent uh, prompt is a big one. Actually, that's uh, something we added where the user can consent to share the profile information if they uh, if they they haven't yet so that's that's something that's really important that we've added that's for the identity piece uh, the profile piece only if you're looking to do graph scopes uh, we'll talk about that in a minute uh, I, I parsed that token and then I just you know went ahead and grabbed some some range data and threw it into a into a, a range so let's take a look at how this works I need to make sure I'm running the right one they're very closely named unfortunately. Uh, Looks like that is running. So let's launch Excel. So this is an Excel one. Uh, we can see that I have a few different accounts signed in here. So I'll show you kind of some different experiences. So this is just the, the simple, again, I, I just modified the sample app. I click run. Oh, I, got, I have to select my range. I didn't care. should scold me for this. But we can see here that uh, it went ahead and it grabbed just by clicking that run, that one call to get get token, uh, get access token. You can also see when, when I set up my tenant, I misspelled my own name, which is hilarious. But what we can see here, this, I'm parsing that token. And I'm getting the the from. I'm just showing you the the scope uh, scopes I've got here. The audience, that's my my app ID, which I can see matches my app ID in Azure, uh, which right here uh, we're not going to you know copy it and, and take a look, but it is the same app. So we see I'm getting. Uh, a scope 
for my service or uh, audience for my service, which is great. And if I switch users, uh, let's see if we can get another one here. We can see just like that, it's getting the, the correct person super easy. Uh, that was, again, that one line uh, of code is, is calling and getting that token. I didn't have to do anything but parse it. So all that's handled. Uh, I will call out, I did not put in a, a fallback method here, so you should, you should definitely do that. And we'll see what that looks like here in the next demo, which the next demo is using the, uh, the actual tooling again that does the, uh, I'm sorry, the SSO quick start that we have. So we have a really cool SSO quick start. It goes ahead and creates a really nice uh, project for you, and it can even register the the Azure Active Directory app registration. So it can go through all the pieces for that. And you can, this is that uh, that that project right here. I did not change this at all. I just wanted to show you uh, this. This took me maybe like 20 minutes to put everything together. And most of that was, you know, waiting for the Azure uh, command line to, to download and, and go through. But it goes ahead. It has some really nice uh, helper uh, libraries in there to go ahead and do the fallback off to handle all the things that you should be doing. So if you're just getting started, this is a great place that you can go and see how that works. Uh, so let's go ahead, let's see who I'm logged in as. So I'm logged in right now as my misspelled user. I can go ahead and try and do this. Now what's gonna happen is this, this should fail, uh, that's expected. So this is the fallback dialogue. So this is if SSO for whatever reason didn't work. And there's a couple scenarios where this could be, either they're in a, uh, the user's in a, an older version that doesn't support SSO, or there's uh, you know some uh, error that wasn't handled uh, now, in this case, again, we have a, a, a few of them in the, the tooling, the, the quick start that are automatically handled, but there are some, some cases like multi-factor auth and conditional access that you need to be careful about. Uh, and we do have some documentation on that and how to handle that. So this is an expected behavior. You want to make sure that you do have this fallback method to let the user go ahead and then sign in the first time, which they have to do to, to go through the, the consent process. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my portal here, and this is the other app that, that we're looking at right now, that Word app. And we can see here, uh, I, I can actually go ahead and uh, grant admin consent for my entire tenant. And so I've done that, and now what, assuming that this propagates quick enough, what we'll see, um, let's see if this works. Boom. So there you go. And I'm a super cool demo person. I totally didn't put that in for this demo. Oh, I did actually. Uh, but this is showing office, in, uh, like your office information, your phone number. You know, this is again just just some basic profile info. But you can. This is getting it from from graphs. So this is going through that whole flow of the getting the profile token, swapping it for a graph token, talking to graph, and we also have a different, uh, a different. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, addition to the quick start that tells you how to modify it to go and get other graph data and, and using that as a, as a great learning tool. So uh, really cool stuff. I think uh, that covers most of it. I, I know I missed one thing actually. Let's go back to that other demo. Let's see if I can get the consent experience real quick just so you can see what it looks like. So in the case of the, the previous, what we just saw with admin consent, that is what you have to do for a graph uh, graph scopes if you have graph scopes uh, just uh, for certain issues that we're still working out and trying to, to move through with, with some of the consent parts uh, the the admin uh, consent is the only way that you can avoid a fallback but with the if you're just using profile you can still do consent uh, right here in client so let's see I think this one should work to ask for consent you start getting uh, I was gonna do that okay actually let me do this is it not running? It might not be running. Oh, that's why. Oh, no, that should be good. Let's try it again. Here we go. Well, you know what? I'm not going to show you the consent experience this time, but I'll go I'll make sure that if anyone wants to see it, we can. Uh, go through that next time. 
uh, or we'll put something up, uh, you know, after on the docs, just showing what that looks like. But uh, that's pretty much the as easy as it is. You you really don't have to do much. That one line that get get access token. It really is that simple to just get the profile information. You do have to do your app registration. The the full details are on the uh, on the documentation, uh, which we do have links to in this deck, and we'll make sure we share out. Uh, they're also in our announcement on the Office Dev uh, blog post. Uh, so just a couple of best practices, make sure to implement that fallback method. Uh, if you don't, uh, you won't let users be able to sign in and that's that's not a great experience. Uh, there are client IDs you have to pre-authorize so that the office host can do the the call on the on on the behalf of the user and talk to your service. Uh, so you have to, you do have to pre-authorize that and the list again is in our documentation. There are some new formatting requirements for the manifest that uh, we're we're finishing updated documentation this week, uh, but it does follow the best practices that are already there uh, in the current docs. We'll just be calling out that they are now required. Uh, and then there's some things you should make sure you check out in the off options explicitly around for graph access or the allow consent prompts. So for graph access, we'll make sure that if you do use graph scopes and you do get graph data, that you, uh, you will be able to uh, fail fast if they didn't have admin consent granted already. So we'll just skip even trying to get uh, a token that won't work. And we'll go ahead and say, hey, like, you know, let's launch that fallback method the first time. And then after that, consent will have been granted and, and, and it should just work. Uh, and then for the, the other piece, like I said, the consent prompt, uh, if you only require profile information, make sure that you include that so you can get the, the, most, uh, the most value out of SSO. So. That's that's what I had. I will answer questions in the chat here after uh, you know after I'm done talking, which is right now. If you have anything else, though, make sure to check out our documentation, like sort of blog posts, and we'll be continuing to do some some additional work on this and and improve the experience as we move forward. Thanks so much.